Hey everyone, so today is going to be another holiday look. It's kind of a full face, more natural wearable type look as opposed to my last one which was the bold lips and wing liner which I know was not for everyone. So I kind of threw in some warmer berry type colors for the holiday season. So if you want a more subdued, wearable, natural holiday look then please keep watching. Okay, so I'm going to be starting off with a primer and I don't usually wear a primer, but I thought I would today, and this one is actually not technically a primer. I know that I'm not the only one that uses it for a primer, and the reason people use it for a primer is because one of the ingredients in it, dimethicone, is a common ingredient in primers, so it has the same type of effect, and it is the Monistat Chafing Relief Powder Gel. I know that sounds really weird to use, as a primer on your face, but it has a really comparable consistency and texture to the um, Smashbox Photo Finish Primer. I don't know if you can see it, but it looks like that. And like I said, it has the same kind of texture to it, that silicone type feel, so it works a lot like it, and it's way cheaper than an actual primer. I think. I don't even know how much this is. I got it so long ago at like Walmart or something. You can get it at like any drugstore for I know less than $10 compared to the Smashbox one, which is like, what, 40 or something? So I would definitely recommend trying this if you haven't yet. Like I said, I know it sounds weird, but it gets the job done. For my foundation today, I'm using the Make It Forever HD foundation, and this is in the shade N128. And I'm just going to pump some on the back of my hand and apply it with this brush, and this is the Sigma Round Kabuki F82. And I'm just going to go around and buff that in. Don't forget to blend it down your neck so everything matches. Then I'm going to go in with the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer, and this is in the shade NC30, and just conceal some problem spots that I'm having right now. And as you can see, this is a little bit light to be concealing blemishes with, but I will just go back over it with my foundation brush and it will all blend out just fine. I'm also going to go ahead and put this on my lids just as a primer. I don't really use eye primers just because I already have concealer and it works just the same and it's one less product. That you have to buy. So I'll just kind of go back in with my foundation brush and tap across where I just put that concealer just so the color all blends out nicely. I'm also drinking coffee. For concealer, I've really been liking these NYX HD concealers, and I'm using two shades. Where are they? I'm using 04 and 01. 04 is a light flesh tone shade, and 01 is a yellow, and I have been liking the yellow for my under eye for a little extra brightness, and then I'll use the flesh tone shade for my normal concealing highlighting routine. So I'm just going to make that triangle shape under my eyes and this is a better highlighting method than the little half moon. It just gives your face more light and it hides your under eye circles better. And then to even it out so you're just not lighter under the eyes, you highlight the center of your face. So a little bit on your forehead down the center of your nose if I could draw a straight line and a little bit on my chin and I'm also going to put a little bit around my nose just because that's where women get hormonally red and then I'm going to go in with the yellow and just put a little bit just under the eyes 
And then I'm going in with my damp um, sponge from Real Techniques and I'm just going to blend all of that out. And the camera seems to be picking up a drastic color difference for some reason, but I promise in person it is really not that big of a color difference between the two. And I have been using this sponge in place of my beauty blender for a little while now, and I highly recommend it over that. It's not only cheaper, but I actually like it a little bit better the way it blends. I've tried some other dupes for it and they don't like expand like this one does. They're just like really hard and they absorb product and they don't blend out very well, but this one puffs up just like the Beauty Blender does. And with the flat end, it just, I don't know, it just blends it out better. Not that the Beauty Blender is bad by any means, but if you can get something just as good or better for less money, why wouldn't you? So I would definitely recommend the Real Techniques blending sponge or something like that. So make sure you get up under your creases. Now we need to set it, and I am actually going to be using my e.l.f. HD powder. I haven't used this in a while. To be honest, I kind of forgot about it. It's been compared to the Makeup Forever um, High Def Powder. I never used that one, but um, I can see how it's comparable just like that primer that I used is comparable to the um, Smashbox one. So this big tub right here I think is only like six bucks or something like that. I got it at Target, so I def definitely recommend trying that out if you're looking for a high def powder. And the thing with high def compared to regular powders is that they're just more um, finely milled, so they just give you a more airbrushed, flawless finish, and it looks good on camera, which is why it is high def. That way, if a camera has really, really good quality, and you can see every little pore and wrinkle on your face. This baby will make them look good. So I'm just gonna set everywhere that I just put that concealer, and then I'm gonna set the rest of my face with a different powder. And you kind of have to be careful with these high def powders. Some of them tend to have a bad light reflecting quality. If you've ever seen pictures of like celebs where they have the like white cast under their eyes. It's just because the reflex in the powder are catching the flash from the camera. So be careful with that, especially under your eyes. Um, I don't know this is necessarily something I would really like bake with when you really pack it under your eyes because then you're going to have a lot of product and depending on the powder you're going to run the risk of the flashback. So just be careful when using the high def powder. To set the rest of my face, I'm using the, um, what is this? The Mineralized Skin Finish in Medium Plus from MAC. And just a flat top powder brush. I've used this powder brush for years now. It is the e.l.f. just powder brush. Just a flat top thing. It's like three bucks at Target. And I know that a lot of people have raved about this brush. And there's really nothing bad to say about it. It packs on the powder. And it's cheap. So I definitely recommend this brush. Moving on to bronzer. This is the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in the shade Give Me Sun. And I don't know where this brush is from. I think it's Coastal Sun. It doesn't have a name on it. But it's just a like chisely type brush. So I can get into the hollows of my cheeks. I'm actually going to bring it up a little bit on my cheeks just for a little extra warmth because it is winter and I'm pale. So every little bit of bronza helps. So also go up on the temples and a little across your forehead. 
jawline and then kind of don't forget to feather it down a little bit on your neck so you don't have like an obvious line of bronzer and then a little bit on my nose like that before I go in with blush I'm going to be using the Rimmel stay matte powder and this chisel brush it's from Morphe it's the M459 and I'm just going to pack some powder along to clean up that contour and make a nice sharp line and I just recently got this brush in an order that I made and I haven't really got to use it yet but I also got a couple other brushes from Morphe in that order this is the 438 brush this is what I just used to apply the high def powder under my eyes and then I finally got the E4 brush which is the blush brush that Jaclyn Hill raves about all the time so I'm excited to start using that because I really needed a good blush brush because the ones I had were either too dense or too big and they just weren't giving me the result that I wanted. So I'm just going to let that sit and for blush I'm also using something that recently came in my Morphe purchase and this is the, I believe it's, yeah, 9B palette. So it's got nine different blushes and I think I'm going to mix these two berry type colors down here. Woo, baby. These are pigmented, just like I said in my last video with those La Femme blushes. Just be careful. So this brush is a really good size and shape and density for blush. It kind of really helps blend it out and it's super soft. I've only used this like twice, so I'm still forming my opinion on it, but so far, I like it. For highlight, I'm using Champagne Pop Shocker. I know I'm really working on getting some more highlights because this is really like the only one that I have, which is why I use it all the time, but because it's not going to last forever and it's a limited product, I don't want to use it all up. Plus, I want to try some different ones, so I'm working on picking some ones that I want for Christmas. So hopefully in later videos I'll be using a different one. Then I'm just going to go in and sweep away that powder. And then just kind of lightly pat so that it kind of blends in a little bit and there's not such a harsh line. We want a clean contour, but we don't want it to be like an obvious line of demarcation in your makeup. And it kind of helps blend that blush out a little bit too in with the bronzer and the highlighter. So it is nice and blended. And I forgot to powder over my lids. So I'm going to do that really quick just with the same HD powder. Just so it doesn't crease and our shadow has a nice base to stick to. And I'm really not sure what I'm going to do with my eyes yet. I think I'm going to use the Lorac Pro Palette. I haven't used this in a while. And I'm not really sure what I want to do, but I'll figure it out. Okay, so I think I'm going to start with this shade right here. It's called Mauve. And I'm just going to apply this all over my lid. just on the lower part of my lid, stopping at the crease, not taking it all the way up to the brow bone or anything. And then I think I'm gonna go in with this shade right here called Garnet, this reddish type shade. And I'm gonna pack that over this and see what it looks like. Okay, so I decided to put it over my entire lid where I just put that mauve color and then I'm going back in with mauve and a fluffy brush and then blending it out in the crease. 
And then I think I'm going to add a little bit of this light bronze shade on the inner part. Okay, so I basically put it on the entire front half of my lid and blended it in a little bit. So now I'm going to go in with this deep purple shade and I'm just going to put that in the outer V area just to kind of deepen it a little bit. Okay, so I decided to go back in with a little bit more of that garnet shade and a smaller fluffy brush. This is the Sigma E25 and blend that out a little bit more and make it a little more warm and I'm probably going to go back in with that light bronze on the inner half just to make it pop a little bit more. And then I'm just going to go in with a fluffy brush and nothing on it and just kind of blend above the crease and kind of fade that color out a little bit so it doesn't go up too high and it's not too harsh of a line. And then I'm going to use this cream shade to highlight my brow. Okay, so now I'm just going to do the same thing to the other eye. For my lower lash line, I'm going to take a pencil brush and that garnet shade, and I'm just going to smudge that along my entire lash line and bring it down pretty well just to get a warm, smoky effect. Then taking a flat definer brush and that deep purple color, I'm just going to press that up against the lash line more so on the outer half. And again, go back in with that pencil brush and just kind of blend it out. I'm even going to go in with that brush that I used in my crease earlier and blend it out even further. This probably still has a little bit of that garnet shade on it. And that way you get a nice smoky effect all the way around. Okay, next I'm going to fill my brows and I usually use the Anastasia pencil and I thought I'd use something different. This is the NYX Micro Brow Pencil. And I've used this a few times. I don't like it as well as the Anastasia pencil just because it's a little harder in like texture. The pencil itself is harder. So it makes it a little bit harder to blend out and work with. But it's like I think $10 compared to the 20 or 21 or whatever the Anastasia one is. So if you're looking for something cheaper, um, it's a little bit harder to work with but gets the job done. I'm looking into wanting to get the um, Urban Decay Brow Weeder Pencil. Um, that's pretty new, and I've heard it's pretty good. It's about the same price as the Anastasia one, so I want to try that just to try something different, but today this is what I'm going to be using, and this is in the shade, what is the shade? Taupe. So with the Anastasia one, you have to be a little bit more careful about how hard you press on the inner part of your brow if you want it to be lighter. But with this one, you actually have to press a little bit more because like I said, it's a little harder and harder to work with. So just kind of test it out just so you know how much pressure you need for the area that you're working on so you don't end up with too dark of an inner part if you do not want it like that. And then this one has the spoolie on the other end, just like the Anastasia one does. Just comb through and that'll help blend it out. For mascara, I'm using the L'Oreal Telescopic in Carbon Black. And I'm just going to put a little bit on my top lashes because I'm going to be putting on falsies. But this is a really good mascara for your lower lashes because it has such a small brush. You can really get under there. Some of those mascaras have the really big brush. They're really difficult for the lower lashes because you tend to like touch things that you shouldn't touch. So 
this is a good lower lash mascara. I know it kind of sounds high maintenance to have a lower lash mascara, but it really helps because I've tried using the big brush because I was using it on my top lashes and it just made a mess because I was touching on my under eye and I touched my nose. So I definitely recommend this one. And also it helps with your top lashes to really get in at the base of your lashes to get them nice and dark. Okay, so while it's drying, I'm going to line my lips, and this is Peekaboo Neutral from NYX. And for lipstick, I'm using this ColourPop Lippy Stick in the shade Lumiere. Then to give them a little more dimension, I'm going to line in another shade, and this is Urban Decay Naked. Look how sad this little baby nub is. I have another one already, but I might as well finish this one. This just shows you how much I love this shade, so I'm just going to use it till I can't use it anymore. So I'm just going to line around the edges and kind of fill in the corners a little bit just to kind of shade and give dimension like you would in the outer corner and crease of your eye. Okay, for lashes, I'm using the Ardell Accents, and these are the number 318. And these accent lashes are good for those who aren't really comfortable putting on um, false lashes, like the full band. It takes a little bit more work to get it to look right and get it really close to the lash line from the inner corner to the outer corner. And these are a little bit easier to blend because they only go on a part of your eye, so these are really good starter lashes. still want to make sure that you get the inner corner stuck down well, but because it stops right here instead of in here, it's a little bit easier to blend. And as you can see, it just gives you a little extra something on the outer part of your eye. It just looks a little bit more sultry and glamorous and kind of gives your eye a little bit more of that almond shape. And after that, this look is complete. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I think this is a really good holiday look because it has the warm berry colors in there but it's not too bold or dramatic it's not as dramatic as my last video so if you don't want something as bold as that this might be a good look to go for so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching and i'll talk to you guys soon bye